December 7th, 2013 uh, live experience video. Uh, for those who do not know, I attended a WWE live event yesterday in uh, Sacramento, California, of course, in the Sleep Train Arena. Um, and yeah, this is my video I'm talking about my experience and uh, whatnot. And uh, yeah, enough of me just talking about it and let me get into my story now. Now, uh, of course, let me show you guys my tickets first. Here are tickets to the show. You probably can't see them. Well, you can see them, but you can't like, get a close up view of it. I had a ring five row C, seats 15 and 16, really good seats. Um, I got to the arena around a little after six-ish, and uh, oh, how appropriate, this Slammy's commercial is actually airing as I'm making this video, how appropriate. But yeah, I got to the arena or just a little after six, not too late, probably, probably around 6.15ish, you know, around there. And uh, they're actually already letting people in, and honestly, it took me probably no longer than five minutes to get up there and go right into the arena. So I was already in the arena by probably 6.20, so I was already in there, and uh, first thing, of course, I went to the merch stand, got to get some merch, that's my go thing to do, uh, go to thing to do when I go to shows, I got to get at least something, because I come right to the event, and, you know, I don't know, I, I kind of don't like leaving shows empty handed, because I don't, I don't know, that's just me, but the things I got, of course, this one, for these two items of the show, the first two items are actually things I tried to get the last show I went to, the Raw, uh, in August before SummerSlam, but I didn't end up getting them because I I don't know why. I I think because they were selling them on the, the truck outside, and I didn't get the truck, or no. They were selling them inside. I didn't go to the Mercedes inside, I went to the one on the outside, so that's why I wasn't able to pick them up. But uh, the two items I'm speaking of are, let me get one out, the first one out. <laughs> Is the Life Family Mask. Can you even hear me? Probably not. This is actually really hard to see out of. I can only see out of one eye, which is this one, the little line right here. I can't see out the other one. I can't even tell if you guys can hear me or not because I can barely understand what I'm saying. But yeah, I got the Life Family Mask. I just thought it was a cool thing to have, you know. And, uh, you know, it's $15, it's a little pricey for this, but, you know, it's all good, you know, I didn't spend that much money, I think I'd spent, I only spent $40, which is good from what I normally spend, but yeah, I got the wife family mask, so that's pretty cool to have, and the other item I got, well, I got three things, but these, like I said, the two that I tried to get the last show, this was actually debuted at the show I went to, uh, the Raw before SummerSlam, which was the Yes Towel, uh, the greatest towel in the world, might I add, this is just awesome. This, uh, this is great. This is, this will be good. Next time I go to Raw or whatever that Dana Bryan's, I'm definitely bringing this. I'm definitely going to yes with this thing. This is, this is just awesome. This is a, this towel is a must have for everyone. This is just greatness right here. This is the thing in the back of the towel. Let me get off. There we go. But yeah, yes towel. Uh, five dollars. Five dollars for a yes towel. So definitely pick that up. And the last thing, for those of you who've been watching my experience videos, you always know this is a must have for me at every show I go to. And that is the program, which is actually a brand new one. This is actually really, really thick. This is actually a really nice program. Holy crap. This is really nice. I didn't look I haven't looked at this until right now. But yeah, this is really, really nice. Of course you got uh John Cena, you got <laughs> got Brock Lesnar trolling the very bottom. Why he's the smallest one, I'll never know. Um, but yeah, just an all out program. Looks pretty cool. Of course you got Triple H right there being the biggest person out of everyone because he likes to bury everyone. Let me just go through it real quick. Let me look at this. This is, oh, this is actually really cool. Has oh, nice. Sorry, I know I'm not showing you guys this, so you're probably wondering what I'm on about. But some really nice pictures in here. It's like not like a little stat thing where they have like their own pages. It's like it's kind of like a magazine kind of. This is pretty cool. Like, come on, it's it's, it's pretty cool. This is a nice program to have. Jericho's on the roster page, even though he's on the roster anymore. Um, yeah, this is a, this is really nice, actually. I might have to look through this after I'm done with this video. I'm spending too much time talking about the program. But, uh, yeah, and uh, actually, ah, oh, damn. I'm going to get it real quick. Another thing, actually, I got as well. 
was the uh, commemorative go to that commemorative cup, which is actually, when I look at it, it's the same exact thing as a program. It's just in a cup form. There's actually some drinks still in there. Not that bad still. This is from yesterday. It still tastes pretty good. But yeah, the commemorative cup, these cups get expensive every time I go there. I think it was like eight bucks there this time. And it was like last time I went to seven. Like, they keep upping the price every time I go there. It's a different price for everything. Fuck you, WWE, trying to to cheat me out of my money. But yeah, those are the things I got. And, um, yeah, like I said, I went to the merch stand, got that. We'll look at that at the concession stand, of course. That's the only thing I, I didn't even eat. I just got a drink. I was, really wasn't hungry. But, uh, yeah, I got those things. And I got in my seat probably by 6.40ish. And the show didn't start until 7.30, so I had almost an hour to kill. And they had this thing where they were showing tweets on the screen about people going to the show. And they actually showed five of my tweets throughout the show, so I was, I was, I was pretty over that day. They, the first tweet of mine they showed well, it was actually pretty funny because I didn't even know they were showing tweets until I just looked up and I saw like, oh look, they aired someone tweet, and literally the next tweet was my tweet, which was uh, my tweet saying happy birthday to Dean Ambrose. So I was marking, I was like, yeah, my tweet made it. And then like a couple minutes later, they show another tweet of my tweet saying that my tweet made it in the air. Like, they, <laughs> I tweeted about it. I said, oh, my tweet made the screen, and they aired my tweet saying my tweet made the screen, so I was like, oh, this is, this is awesome. And then like five minutes later, there, another tweet of mine saying that um, tonight's going to be real hoot. You can just go on my Twitter, you, you can see the tweets that I'm talking about. So I marked out even longer, but oh my god, this is awesome, there are my tweets. And then they showed one of my pictures, they uh, showed a picture of my, uh, me taking a picture of my seats, they put that on there as well. So I was like, dude, this is awesome, like I was, I was over, they love me, I'm over. But yeah, just basically I just sat in my uh, seat until the show started, which was pretty boring. They are airing some random music, which is good music. It was some songs I liked, but uh, just, you know, it was some weird music you didn't expect them to play. It was really random. But yeah, I just, I was kind of really surprised how fast we were able to get in. I mean, they're letting people in probably maybe at 6 o'clock, and they usually don't start letting people in until like an hour before the show starts. So even hell, even less before that. I remember the last show I went to, the Raw for SummerSlam. Uh, the or doors open or the show started at 4.30 and they didn't let people in until like 3.45ish, maybe even 4 o'clock. So I was pretty surprised how uh, early we were able to get in the show this time. And uh, yeah, I just you know sat there waiting for the show to start. 7.30 comes, the show starts, Justin Roberts comes out. And uh, actually before he came out, I did not know this, but they have a WWE Live intro. They had their own intro for the WWE Live events, which I had no clue about. So I was kind of like, whoa, this is awesome. And I kind of laughed because the, the, the song they used is the Total Divas theme song for the WWE Live intro. So I was kind of laughing at that, but it, it was it was pretty cool. They actually made it, you know, the show feel like it was not a big deal, but like, you know, it wasn't, you're getting your money's worth, what I'm trying to say. It's like, they had a nice stage, the video package and everything. It was, uh, it was pretty nice. House shows are always very, very fun. House shows, I've learned, because I've been to, how many house shows I've been to? Is this my fourth house show? I think it was my fourth house show. I'm not even sure. Maybe my fifth, I don't know. The house shows are always way more funner than, uh, or more fun than TV shows, or the TV taping, I should say, because, you know, with the house shows, the wrestlers just have fun. You know, they don't have to be serious and be in the character all the time. They just, they have fun, and you can always tell the wrestlers have fun. It's very entertaining. Um, the wrestling may not always be the greatest. You'll probably get maybe one or two really good wrestling matches, but it's it's definitely a very entertaining show. I definitely had a lot of fun watching the show. It was very entertaining in my eyes, in my perspective. The house shows are just... You know, the tapings and pay-per-views are more of a spectacle, but I think you definitely get your money's worth more at house shows than you get at, um, you know, the TV tapings and whatnot. That's just my opinion. But the first match to start off the show was uh, the Usos versus the Real Americans. Uh, Usos come out to a pretty good pop, you know, not not a very large one, but not a very small one either. The Real Americans came out. I was in the Cesaro section, you know, I had some marks with me. We're all trying Cesaro. We want to see the swing. We're just marking out. And this was a, this was a good match. It, Went for like maybe seven minutes. It wasn't a very long match, but it was a pretty good opening match. Uh, some comedy stuff throughout the show was pretty funny. Uh, the Usos were dancing, and you know, um, funny part was Swagger tagged in. Swagger was trying to, I like, guess, out dance him. I don't know what the hell he's doing. He just started rambling, going like everyone's like, "What the fuck is Swagger doing?" Like he just looked like a dumbass. But. Yeah, this match was actually an example of how I was saying wrestlers have fun. Like, even the real Americans were having fun. Zazar looked like he was having fun. The Usos were definitely having fun. Just, 
it was a pretty good little tag team match to start the show. Cesaro did the Cesaro swing. I was popping it for, I, was, I popped for it, but I was disappointed because he only swung like five times before I let go. I was like, oh, I want to see like, you know, 30 spins, but eh, it's, a, it's a live event, you know, you didn't have to go all out. But like I said, definitely a fun little way to, uh, to kick off the show. Usos, of course, won with the uh, super kick, the uh, Jack Swagger, of course, splash to follow. So definitely a good way to start the show. And next after that, we actually had uh, Alexander Rusev versus uh, Zack Ryder. You know, Rusev is from NXT. Unless you watch him, unless you watch NXT, you probably have no clue who he is, and no one knew who he was when he came out. Dead silence. It was. Just, I mean, I didn't expect anyone to know who he is because from NXT, but it was just. I don't know. I, <laughs> I wonder what the rest of us think when they come out to pure silence because I mean, they're trying to like get amped up. They're trying to like you know generate heat or whatever, whatever you are, and it's just like. No one's reacting to it. It's pretty pretty sad and funny at the same exact time. The writer came out to actually a really good pop. I was like, no. I don't like you, writer. You suck. But, eh, it is what it is. He was going to job anyways, and he did. But Rusev actually cut a promo before the show started, or before the match. I couldn't understand a word he was saying because he was speaking in Russian or whatever his native is, whatever he is. He was speaking a different language than, you know, all the what chants between them. He couldn't really understand what he was saying. But um, he basically killed Ryder. Ryder got some offensive offense in there, not off offensive. Ryder didn't get you know a decent amount of offense in this match, but in the end, Rusev basically killed Ryder. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. Nothing really more to talk about this match. And next, oh god, was the Funkadactyls versus Alicia Fox and Oksana. And actually, before the show started, they had a little Twitter poll where you can text or tweet. Uh, we want this match to be either a dance-off or a Divas tag team match. And immediately I'm thinking, okay, obviously the dance offs going to win because it's a stupid stipulation and you have a lot of morons that pick the stupid stuff. <laughs> oh, excuse me. But surprisingly enough, this actually ended up winning to be a regular tag team match. So I was really, really surprised and really happy at the same time because I didn't want to see a dance-off. Well, and when I think about it, it wouldn't have been that bad with the, you know, the Divas involved, but I, I didn't want to see that. This match was the, you can pretty much figure it out, it sucked. Uh, I did have a good view though, because I actually had, it wasn't my way, but I had like a, I was facing toward like a post. It wasn't my way at all, but you know, it was just there. Or it was, you know, teaming right there, got my way, but throughout the show it, it didn't bother me. And actually Naomi was right there, and she was doing a lot of jumping, a lot of going side to side, so the view I had wasn't bad at any, by any means, you know. But just the match, I, I don't want to go into detail. Cameron, I, if you follow me on Twitter, especially during Total Divas, you know I, I hate her guts. But this match, I'm not going to go, like I said, pretty much uh, speaks for itself. A lot of messing around, a lot of ass slapping, a lot of just, yeah, total disaster. But the Funky Dackles did get the win, and uh, I was kind of irritated because after the match, they're doing their whole dance routine in the ring. I'm like, okay, the match is over. You can go now. No one wants to see you in the ring anymore. you got to go, but they're still dancing. I'm like, Get the fuck out. But yeah, that was a disaster. But uh, here, we're getting some good stuff here. And next we had The Miz versus Kofi Kingston. Now this was actually a really good match. This one, actually, I got a really good amount of time too. I'd say 10 to 15 minutes. They got a lot of time, which I was surprised by. And it was actually a really good match. Miz acted pretty arrogant in this match. And not arrogant as like a, you know, a cocky heel. He just acted like an arrogant person. Like... When the crowd was chanting, Kofi, Kofi, Miz like, yeah, let me hear it, Kofi, Kofi, like, another, another prime example of Russell just having fun, he looked like he was having fun doing what he was doing, and it was just, it was awesome, it was just, no pun intended, but just, this match was really good, I was, I was really enjoying it, a lot of near falls, a lot of good back and forth action, this match is very, very enjoyable, Miz and Kofi just, they're two guys that just seem to not have bad matches against each other. They have, they always have really good matches from what I've seen. And it was just nothing, nothing different here. And it was pretty funny because there's actually this fan in front row that Miz, he acted as if he was his manager. Like, uh, Kobe went for Trouble in Paradise and like Miz backed out and rolled out of the ring. And like some guy was like, you know, prep talking. Miz like, yeah, Miz, come on. And Miz even went up to the guy like, alright, what do you want me to do? Like, you know, try to get advice from this guy. And they actually hugged it out. And like, this Miz literally acted like this guy was his manager. It was... It was pretty funny. Like, you know, Miz be in the ring and Miz be down. And dude's like, watch out, Kofi's behind you. Miz is like, Kofi's behind me. He's like, yeah. And, like, it legitimately seemed like that dude was Miz's manager. It was crazy. And, 
like Miz would go for the figure fours, like, should I do it? And dude's like, yeah! Like, it was, it was pretty insane. And the fact that, you know, Miz interacted with that guy so much. So it was pretty cool, you know, like I said, wrestlers have more fun at house shows. That's why, if there's one near you, and you probably think, oh, I don't need to go to it, it's not a TV show or pay-per-view, go to it. You'll probably have more fun than you do at actual shows, or the actual TV tapings and pay-per-views. But like I said, just a very, very solid tag team match. The ending really started getting going. It was a lot of near falls, a lot of near counters. Miz had the figure four. Kofi would get out of it. Kofi would go for Troll and Paradise. Miz, Miz would duck. Go for Skull Crush finale. You know, Kofi would counter him to the SOS. It was a lot of back and forth action. And before anything happened, Shield comes out out of nowhere. Like, I don't, even, I don't remember what was happening in the ring. I know they were both down. I don't know if Kofi was in the figure four or what, but they were just both down, like, not like down for the count, but like they're going at it on the ground. I think, oh, Kofi took him down. They started going at it, and the Shield came out of nowhere for no reason. I was, I popped huge because it was so unexpected. Shield comes out, you know, beats Kofi and Miz down. Match ends in no contest. Uh, out comes the Rhodes brothers to a huge pop. Shield got a huge pop too, by the way, because it was unexpected, like I said. But Rhodes brothers come out to a huge pop, making the save. Uh, clear house. And then it is announced that uh, Reigns and Rollins will be challenging for the tag team titles. So uh, we got the Rhodes Brothers versus the Shield for the tag team titles next. I'm amped up because I know I'm in for a great match right here. Uh, Ambrose got sent to the back to make it a two and two instead of like uh, you know Ambrose is there interfering and whatnot. So Ambrose got sent to the back, and uh, this definitely matches the night right here. Just a great tag team match. These two or these two teams just never disappoint. They're just great, great chemistry between both teams. Uh, <laughs> Reigns and Rollins. Two guys you never expect to mess around in a match, messed around. There was a spot where uh, Rollins punched Goldust and rolled out of the rings like, yeah! Like, he acted like he just, like, got the winning pinfall and, like, I don't know. He acted like he just won the Super Bowl or something. He's like, yeah! And Reigns like, yeah, just... <laughs> like, they were messing around. Like, what? Like, these guys are supposed to be, like, these renegades that are supposed to be intimidating. They're sitting there messing around, like... I thought that was awesome. Like, I, I can't stress it enough. House shows are more fun. Wrestlers have fun. It's awesome experience. Definitely go to one if you have opportunity to. But it was uh, good stuff there. Uh, like I said, the match was great. I was kind of mad though because Gold Dust uh, was in the match, like 85% of the match. Um, I'm not complaining because Gold Dust in the ring. I'm just saying it was like one of those beatdowns where you know the heel team kept getting the free, uh, frequent tags. Just beating on the face, and when the face, you know, looks like the hot tag, the heel runs in and prevents it from happening. So I was kind of getting on my nerves because, I mean, I know it was building up for the hot tag for Cody, but it was like, all right, come on, I know the hot tag is gonna happen, so I don't want to wait 25 minutes for it to happen. You know, like it was, it was getting to the point where I was just, just getting impatient, I guess. But you know, Cody got that hot tag, uh, hit a beautiful uh, double drop kick, hit a beautiful moonsault on. Uh, uh, Rollins, by the way, beautiful. And of course, Reigns hit a fierce spear on Gold Dust. Everyone popped. Everyone went crazy for the spear. It was awesome. Just Reigns, Reigns of spears, man. They're just a thing of beauty. They're awesome. But yeah, just an awesome tag team match. And the ending was actually the exact same ending to their battleground match, where Rollins tried to get a roll of victory on Rhodes. Rhodes kicked out. Swings on Rhodes. Rhodes ducks. Locks in uh, crossroads. Heads crossroads, got the one, two, three to win the match and retain the tag team titles. Like I said, definitely matched the night. Just great, great action here. And the crowd was into it. It was awesome. Kudos to both teams. Just awesome. And from there on, I believe with the intermission for about 10, 15 minutes, I didn't go anywhere. I sat in my seat for the entire intermission because everyone's going to get either a concession stand or the bathroom. So I might have got out of my seat to you know wait in line for anything. But actually, uh, during intermission, they were showing more tweets and pictures and stuff. And uh, before the show started, when they, I noticed they were showing pictures, I took a selfie of myself, the you know, in hopes of them showing me on the big screen. And they did. And I popped big. I'm like, ah, there I am on the big screen. Like, just me, you know, sitting there doing a selfie. It was awesome. I was like, yeah, I'm definitely over. So I got five tweets. Actually, I got probably like 12 of my tweets shown because they showed my tweets multiple times. Um... They showed my Ambrose tweet like twice, and they, I think at least all my tweets, my, I think my pictures, well, my picture of my seats got shown like three times, my selfie got shown once, and I think my other tweets got at least shown two or three times. So I got my tweets up there a lot. 
So, yeah, it was cool seeing my tweets up there. And even had t my Twitter handle and everything, it was awesome. The intermission, it was just, you know, intermission, what do you expect? You're just sitting there, you're not doing anything. They did play uh, Capital Cities, though, so that was pretty good for them to do. But, yeah, and then, of course, we come back from intermission. We actually have a triple threat match for the United States Championship. Dean Ambrose defending against uh, Damian Sandow and Dolph Ziggler. Sandow comes out at first, cuts a promo saying how this is going to be a historic night because not only at TLC is he going to be Biggie Langston for the Intercontinental Championship, but tonight he's going to beat Dean Ambrose or Dolph Ziggler to become the new United States Champion. And the authority would have you know no choice but to make him the face of the WWE. And, you know, just <laughs> Sandow's awesome. And he's really, really loud. Like... When wrestlers talk, you know, unless you're, like, in the ringside, you can't really hear him, but stand down. I'm pretty sure the cheap seats hurt his ass. He was extremely loud. And I'm not talking on the mic. I'm talking, like, during the match of him just yelling. He's really loud. And then uh, Ambrose, I'm pretty sure. I'm not 100% sure, but I'm pretty sure Ambrose fell during his entrance because I saw him coming down, and then I saw him hop, and then, like, just disappeared. Like, I didn't see him. Like, he just disappeared, and, like, I just saw his head bob right back up. Like, I'm pretty sure he fell, but I'm not 100% sure, so don't, you know, sit there and be like, hi, Ambrose fell, because I'm not 100% sure, like I said, just, I think he did. I'm pretty sure he did, though. And then Ziggler comes out to a huge pop, by the way. He came out to, to a very, very good pop. I was really surprised how over he was. But this triple threat match, awesome match as well. Uh, this is probably maybe second best match of the night. Just a very, very good match. Sandow and Ambrose, of course, teaming Ziggler, a majority of the match. And, okay, if Ambrose and Sandow were make a tag team, They'd be awesome. They were hilarious together. There was a, a spot where Ambrose was like trying to calm Sandow down, and Sandow's like, "No, he pushed me in the face!" Like, they were just messing around. It was awesome. Hell, Sandow even did the hair flick and the fucking butt wiggle. I was like, "Oh my god!" And Ambrose did the hair flick. They were just mocking Ziggler. It was just a very, very entertaining triple threat match. It's a very, very good match as well. And actually, the spot where uh, uh, Ziggler went to give Ambrose a superplex from the top. And Sandow came out and gave Ziggler a powerbomb as Ziggler was giving him a superplex. So it was a really, really sick spot that, you you know, you probably wouldn't think they'd do on, like, TVs and pay-per-views. But I'm surprised at the house show. But just a very, very entertaining triple threat match. Of course, Ambrose retained. Uh, Ziggler ended up hitting a zigzag on Sandow. Then, you know, Ziggler got up. Ambrose got him for the headlock driver and got the 1-2-3 to retain the United States Championship. Very, very good match. Good stuff there. And then after that, we go on to, uh, okay, this is, okay, this is by far my favorite match. And I'm going to tell you why, because everyone's going to question why this is my favorite match. We have Ryback versus Santino Morella. This was awesome. After this match, I want to see a feud, because this was hilarious. Of course, they have Ryback coming out, telling Roberts to announce him, you know, you know Roberts announced him, and Ryback's yelling at him because he didn't announce him properly. He had uh, Roberts announce him as 305 pounds of all man or whatever, it was something like to that extent, and then he like he told him like tell him this, and he's like, well, Ryback rules. Like Roberts is sitting there like just taking like you know Ryback's actually bullying him and saying it, and Cino, Santino comes out, and gets in the ring and basically tries to intimidate Ryback, saying like I'm not scared of you, Ryback, I'm better than you, Ryback. Like he was basically saying my fist is like a it's something like he got like a five minute promo just ranting like gibberish like it's some it was hilarious like he was trying to make him seem like a big Basically, he's trying to like act like if the roles are reversed, like Ryback. If he was Ryback's size and Ryback was his size, basically trying to like scare him, saying like, "Oh, I'm not scared of you. Um, I'm not gonna beat you." He's like, and then like he stood up in front of Ryback, he's like, "Actually, now I'm close to you. You're pretty big." Like it was, it was actually, it was hilarious promo. Like just Santino was just going off, like, "You want to dance, Ryback? We'll dance." And like, it, honestly, it was hilarious. It was awesome, and the match itself was, oh my god, even better. Okay, so they had, you know, the little thing where Santino tried to give him a shoulder block, and Ryback stood there, and when Santino hit him, Santino flew, and Ryback didn't even move. Ryback didn't flinch, he didn't, like, you know, move or anything. Santino hit him, and Ryback just stood still, completely still. It was, honestly, a very entertaining match. It was, I mean, it was obviously a comedy match, but it was very, very entertaining, it was very funny, and I honestly loved it. This honestly was my favorite match. It was, honestly, that, it was hilarious, it was very entertaining. But of course, Ryback did end up getting the win with Shell Shock. Uh, they actually did. They did do a thing where Santino actually did get the defense, some offense. They actually got Ryback on his on his feet or off his feet, and you know Santino tried to do the whole Cobra thing, but Ryback did a meat hook on him, then Shell Shock for the win. But yeah, just very very entertaining match. It was awesome, to be perfectly honest. 
And then after that, we go on to the main event of the evening, which was John Cena versus Alberto Del Rio for the World's Weight Championship. Um, of course, Cena came out as the biggest pop. I mean, wherever you're at, Cena's got the biggest pop regardless. He just The crowd erupts for him. And uh, this match, actually, the match the match started, well, Del Rio attacked Cena while Roberts was announcing Cena. He's like the World's Weight Champion, John Cena. Cena put his arms up, Del Rio attacks him. And they're actually wrestling in their shirts for like a good five minutes. I was kind of like, Phew. I don't know why they're wrestling their shirts for. But it was a good match. Um, you know, Cena and Del Rio, they're capable of having good matches, but, you know, just nothing really special or really memorable or, or worth talking about. But this was a good match, you know, Cena. It was kind of funny. Cena took his shirt off and the crowd erupted for it because it's Cena. And he took his shirt off and the girls and went crazy for him. But, uh, you know, Del Rio basically just worked on the arm. He, you know, basically kicked Cena's ass, gave majority of the match. Uh, Del Rio... His kicks, man, he he got, like, four vicious kicks on Cena's head. I was kind of worried. Like, he got that super kick, Dan Sagiri, some more kicks. Like, I was trying to get worried. I'm like, damn, man, you're going to give this guy a concussion with these kicks. They're vicious. But just like I said, a good solid tag team match. There's actually a spot where um, Del Rio had Cena's shirt. He took it off. When Cena took his shirt, I took his shirt, and we knocked him down. He ripped it in. He ripped it down the middle and, like, put it around, like, you know, one of Del Rio's old scarves he would wear. He was wearing it like that. But yeah, Del Rio was pretty old, pretty over in my section, you know, because I was surrounded by Smarks. Everyone was going, oh, see, 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 you know, like, you know, blocking the arm. And Del Rio was feeding off our section. Like, he was looking at our section like, yeah, you want me to kick his ass? I'll do it. And, um, you know, they wrestled a good amount of time on the outside as well. You know, Del Rio threw Cena in his steps, stood on the steps, and, you know, Del Rio took a 6-6 a six, six spot where when he tries to, you know, he goes through the ropes and lands on the ground, just... You know, like I said, a pretty good match, you know, it wasn't anything special, but it was pretty good. And the ending, of course, is the infamous ending that other matches have, where Cena goes for the AA, Dario gets out of it, Dario goes with the cross arm breaker, Cena ducks it, Cena hits an AA, and hits the 1-2-3 pinfall for the victory to retain the World of A Championship. But, uh, yeah, that was, uh, that was it. Uh, Cena basically stood in the ring for about a good minute or two, walked through, he literally, he like jogged around the ring, man, he wanted to get the hell out of there. <laughs> Maybe because he was tired, I don't know. Went on the ramp, posed, and uh, left, and yeah, that was the show. And uh, just overall, very entertaining show. Oh, sorry. And that's what you're pretty much guaranteed when you go to a house show. Just a very, very fun show. And uh, I don't think I've ever had a bad experience at a house show. I mean, TV tapings I can have had bad experiences with, but house shows I'm always, I'm always, I always leave happy. So it was definitely a very good show. Um, it's three, three shows I've had this year alone. I had. Smackdown in January with Rock before the Rumble. Raw in August with Brock before SummerSlam. Now this house show. So, I got... If I would have got a pay-per-view this year, I would have hit, like, everything they would have done. But, yeah, hopefully they come back soon. Um, I'm not expecting, like, soon, soon, like, in March or whatever. But hopefully, maybe the summer. Maybe. I don't know. But, yeah, this is a very, very fun experience. Uh, can't wait to go to another show. But, yeah, that's my experience video. Hope you guys enjoyed and uh, yeah, I'll see you guys next time.